got to do a presentation yesterday. My PowerPoint wouldn't work. That was pretty embarrassing. Thank you. The full show, please. Thank you. Okay. We've done that. So, where are we going to start? And that's where we're going to start. We're going to start at the end. We're going to start at the end because you need to know where you are going. It doesn't matter whether you're a teacher, whether you're a principal, whether you're a director of a group of schools, it doesn't matter what you're building a school improvement, uh, an improvement plan for, you need to know where you're going. Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to know when you get there? And more importantly, how, you, how are you going to know how to get there? So you go, you're going on a journey. You're going on a school improvement journey. But first of all, we'll do a little journey. And do you like my picture? Anybody familiar with that kind of transport? It took me ages to find that for you. So we're all going to go on a journey. Now then, where shall we go? Let me think. Where shall we go? Right. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> okay, I know where we're going. Spent two minutes in pairs and tell me how to get there. Okay, now go. Good question. Go. You get top marks. You can't tell me where we're going, can you? Because I have how to get there, because I haven't told you where we're going. How many times have you delivered a lesson? or tried to formulate a plan and not shared with your students or your co-workers or whoever it is you're working with where you're going. And I think if you reflect on your own practice, you'll probably realize, as I have done many times, that that's the bit you forgot. So I am going to tell you where we're going. Well, I'm not. You're going to guess, actually. Who knows where this is? <coughs> Shout out if you think you know. Somebody there. You can have another sweetie. It's Marie in the mountains above Islamabad. Um, a very special trip that I took there. So how am I going to get there? Do, does everybody know where Marie is or nearly everybody? Right. Okay. So in groups of two or three, just very quickly write down five instructions for me to get from this point to Marie. Okay, everybody, stop. <laughs> All right, who would like to share their directions first? Okay, Mr. Ali, off you go. Oh. Well, all you have to do is to uh, get yourself booked with Devu. Get on th this, this uh, coach service we have, which takes you directly to uh, PC Bhulman. Well, that's about it. Okay. Um, you don't know where Marie is, do you? You don't know anything about it, do you? Right. You don't know anything about Marie, do you? Oh, right. Okay, so all I've got to do is go and book with a travel company, and that's it. Okay, all right. Somebody else give me their, um, their instructions how to get there. To be with, you should be someone with whom you enjoy, and you have, because you are planning for an excursion trip. Okay, so I've got to take somebody that I'm going to enjoy being with. Other than uh, plan, just booking a Devu ticket, she needs to do a, uh, he or she needs to do a lot of planning, which includes what finances are involved, the duration of the stay. Uh, what about the luggage? How many days are which uh, which areas do you plan to visit? The entire plan, the logistics of the entire trip. You need to have all of that in place before you uh, ticket uh, you, before you book a ticket. Okay. What's your name? Right, Subair. You can take over now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's to illustrate my point. 
yes, I could go and book a travel agent, but I don't know where to get a travel agent from here. When I, I, in fact, to be quite honest, I seriously would not know how to walk out of this hotel right now. The last time I was here, you could use the main entrance and there'd be a taxi there, but you can't do that anymore. So I can't even get out of the hotel to go to a travel agent to book it. So what am I short of with, those in, with, with, with that lack of instructions? I could, and that would then give me more information. I need to take, so, or it's best that I take someone with me that A, knows where they're going and B, I want to be with. Good advice, but it's not enough on its own. But this answer came pretty close to illustrating my point. I need to plan it. I need to plan, 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 plan. I need all the details. Just get on my mobile phone and do it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the school improvement journey is exactly the same. It's very complicated and it needs lots and lots of details. Now, I don't know how many of you are principals and how many of you are teachers, but when I got my first headship, I knew that I needed a new, uh, school improvement plan and various other things as well. But I got my first headship because I was a good teacher, not because I was a good head teacher. And the principals among you will tell you that being a principal or being a head teacher is very, very different to being a teacher. Very different indeed. So I didn't have the skills, I had to learn them on the job. But I knew I needed a, a school improvement plan. And I'd been involved in doing little bits of school improvement plans throughout my career, but where on earth did I start? Um, not in terms of, like I said before, the theory. It was the practice. What did I actually have to do to start this process? So, we'll start. School improvement is all about you. It's all about the children, it's all about the teachers, it's all about the principal, it's all about the whole school community. In the UK, we've got an organizer, a body called Ofsted. I'm sure most of you have heard of them. Well, not quite so much now, but certainly when Ofsted first started and up until about four or five years ago, if you'd have said Ofsted in a British context, in a British classroom, the teachers would have gone, oh, no, not Ofsted. Uh, Ofsted made the rules, told the schools what to do, and then the schools were meant to get on with it. We've, we've got a government that have introduced so many new initiatives into schools that the teachers and the schools have no idea what they're doing. No clue. Because there being, so many things are being imposed on them. Good afternoon, Mr. Kasuri. Good job you didn't come five minutes earlier. <laughs> we were talking about you. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what anybody else tells you you've got to do. It doesn't matter what anybody, how much anybody tells you you've got to change. If you don't want to change, it won't work. It won't work in your school. You can, you'll go through the motions. You'll do the th so when you get your Ofsted re report or your evaluation report. Yes, you'll start to address the, the issues in it, but it won't make a real difference. It won't change practice and beliefs in your school. So there are three essential mechanisms. And I can't read them now, they're so small. Um, you need to know where you are, and you need to know where you're going. We've already established that. We've just been on a journey to Marie. You need people to get you there, and you need the finance to do it. And those three things I've done on a cog on purpose because they are intertwined all the way through. So I started, w going back to this, sc this school that I took over, I started with where we are, we are now. And 
much of it in the first instance was subjective. I walked around school, I talked to teachers, I watched lessons informally, and I decided all of the areas that I wanted to change, and I started to formulate my vision. My vision was pretty, pretty clear. I knew very quickly where we were going to go. I knew so quickly that I was able to inform the local education authority that this school had no business being open, and children were in danger. There, was a, there wasn't an atmosphere of um, learning going on in the teaching or learning going on in the school. And it was an unsafe environment for everybody, everybody, and I needed some help to do something about it. I knew exactly where I wanted to go within a year, within two years, and within three years. One mistake that I did make was that I thought I could do most of it on my own, but I'll come back to that later, I couldn't. I'd got to bring everyone with me. So, I decided that within three years, I wanted the school to be an exceptional school. I'll tell you at the end whether or not it was. You might like to place bets on it now. Um, so, as I said, I'd, I started to look at it and see where we are now. And I did that, but then I started to think about it. I was hearing different things. I was hearing from one teacher who was very kind and very nice and had been doing the same thing, same science lessons for 20 years, that everything in science was fine. I was hearing from another teacher that had been teaching for about five or six years that everything in science wasn't fine. And where did my opinion fall? And it wasn't really about opinions. I needed to know. I needed to know the reality of where we were, and that's what you need to know before you do any improvement plan. It doesn't matter if it's a whole school improvement plan, it doesn't matter if you're a maths teacher just looking at your own lessons. You need to know where you are now because if you try and start from an inaccurate baseline, you're gonna make your journey a lot more difficult. I also heard different stories from parents, ver varying stories from parents and students and people in the local community. So that made me start to think about the stakeholders in the school. Yes, I was the head teacher. Yes, I could have my own way if I wanted to, but was that really going to get me and the school where I wanted to be in a year's time and I decided it wasn't. So I started to think about who are the stakeholders in my school and that's what I want you to do now. Now, I'm not going to tell you who the stakeholders were in my school.